So this, uh, this might come as a shock to many of you, but one of my low key goals for this year personally was to buy more games and hardware. Shocking, I know. But that's why we have a PSP Go here in 2021. I mean, I do have one, but it's in kind of rough shape. So I'm hoping this will be a better example unit to actually have on hand. And, uh, you know, the going value for these is about $200 used complete in box, whereas the original MSRP was $250. So if I'm going to spend close to original MSRP, hopefully um, it looks nice. Let's unbox it. Let's fire it up. And we'll also actually add some games to it from PSN and uh, play it for a bit as well. The PSP Go is such a fascinating device in that this really was the OG digital edition. Over 10 years ago, Sony experimented with the PlayStation Portable, which at that point, you know, it was like, what do we got to lose? Because we've got so much piracy on the platform. We got a low attach ratio. Um, PSP was doing okay, at, you know, in hindsight, but it was still getting demolished by the DS at the time. And, um, you know, so they thought well into the PSP lifecycle, let's release. Uh, completely di uh, digital machine which there wasn't a UMD conversion program because that was the the tough proposition sell right yeah it was a cool radically different looking PSP with a sliding me uh, mechanism but um, you know it's like still $250 they evaluated a UMD conversion program but that didn't pan out let's see how we can get this open here Yeah, they, they evaluated it. I remember it at the time, it was a big story where they thought, yeah, we'll we'll look into it. Um, like, we all knew it wasn't going to be like a one-size-fits-all for every single UMD, because that's just the reality of the business. It's like how backwards compatibility works with Microsoft, or, you know, PS2 and PS2 and PS1 classics on PS3 or PS4. Only a handful of games ever really get approved throughout that entire life cycle because you got to go through QA again, you got to go through a license, restart, uh, talk to the publisher. So it would have been the same deal here. Um, PSP Go is a very tiny box, by the way. It always throws you off every time you look at it. And I'm loving how nice the box looks. It's a very good condition box. And uh, yeah, Japanese model. So on a system level, we'll have Circle and X swapped, which is, uh, well, I'm kind of used to it by now, but even then, it's still. Like, that's some really tough muscle memory fighting you if you've never bought a Japanese PlayStation uh, PlayStation console or handheld before. On a system level, um, those buttons will be swapped. Well, unless it's a PS5 now, because that's uh, that officially changed with that console. There's our little power brick. And, um, I mean, the software will still be fine. I mean, assuming that you're playing US software, or, I guess, any other Western software. There's our little charging cable. Yeah, so most pretty much complete. Yeah, actually really complete. We got all documentation as well. That is nice to see. I can pull it out. There you go, our media go. Oh my God, it's even, even this is still sealed. Nobody used this. This is an actual CD for the media go management software. One of the best ways to manage content for PSP really is a PlayStation 3 at this point, ironically. Um, even PlayStation 4 could not manage PSP content. So if you're totally into the PlayStation landscape and you've got a PS3 on hand, it is a perfect way to manage PSP content. Oh, and PS Vita content, actually. Yeah, so it even has what looks like the original wrap on it as well. Like, it's got a little bit of, um, you know, bent, what have you. Like, it's clearly a used, used system. But that's what I love about Japan. They, like, they kept this, right? The original owner. Oh, yeah. This is already miles better than what mine looked like. It's just glistening. Oh, that slide. We got a charge, too. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it fired right up. Wow. Oof. It, like, you remember when I was playing Astro's Playroom on PS5, and then that, uh, when there was a PSP and I, and I had Astro hit it, and then the little startup animation, uh, went off, and I was just like, oh my god, that was amazing. Oh man, brings me back. Here is our PSP. Go! 12 free gigs. Got some, uh, <laughs> services that I'm not familiar with, so that's definitely a Japan... 
Japan thing. Oh, this sends me channels. Oh boy, it's been a long time. I do have to switch this to English though. Can't speak Nihongo just yet. Oh boy, which one was it? There we go. I can't believe it's holding a charge so well. We're, and it's three, three bars. We are totally full. That's actually really surprising because this did sit for a little bit. I know it got here uh, a few weeks ago and uh, I just haven't gotten around to it just yet. Oh, we got to change this uh, the theme too. I do prefer the classic. And I do prefer the... I mean, normally I go blue, but... I kind of like the uh, default colors. Like, sometimes people ask me, why do I always have, like, why is my PlayStation... Well, when during the PS4 life cycle, why was my PS4 blue the entire time? Why don't you use custom themes? Same with my PS3. I just don't... I'm not into that stuff. I like the default wallpaper. I like the default... Pre, the way that the product is presented to consumers, I kind of like that setup. I, I don't know. Call me boring. Call me vanilla. But if I'm a, the kind of person that's, one, buying a PSP Go nowadays still using DualShock 3s on a PlayStation 3. Uh, I'm not into the custom firmware or modding scene, which is going to be shocking for what I'm about to do here, but uh, considering the fact that I do that, that's kind of why I prefer vanilla setups. I don't know, I'm just... I don't know, I've said this before, but I guess I'm a purist in that sense. I like playing games on original hardware. I like, you know, the stock images and whatnot. And um, let me bring you in closer, though. Look at this... Look at this PSP Go! Look at it. This thing is so crisp. This is why I love buying hardware from Japan. Look at the back. I am quite pleased with this purchase. I'm quite pleased with this purchase. Yeah, this is also a little cute OS feature for just the PSP Go. When you close it, you get a little clock. What's also really funny about PSP Go if you recall, back in 2009, was that this was supposed to be like a little surprise from Sony Computer Entertainment, uh, but we all knew it was happening and it was their fault because they leaked it in their uh, digital magazine core, which is a weird thing that Sony did for a short time on uh, PlayStation 3 through PSN. They would sell a, a digital magazine called Core, and it was like, I think, 4 or 5.99 per magazine. It was every single month. But it was basically just an app on PS3. You would start it, and then it would be a gateway of a, you know, it'd be a bunch of videos and interviews and things like that. But it was basically like video content. You were more or less paying for video content. You were paying for advertisements, really. And uh, there was a core episode um, talking about PSP Go. But the problem is we didn't know it was a thing until the core episode. Uh, and in that core episode, they were saying like, oh, they just revealed it at E3. Let's. You know, let's hear more about it. And then by the time we got to E3, uh, Kasurai actually acknowledged it, saying that this was the worst kept secret of E3. Here it is. We actually have uh, a couple of names for this beautiful little device. First, we call it the worst kept secret of E3. And. We call it PSP Go. Yeah, Core was such a weird, it was a weird thing. They did that, they did Pulse, they did the tester. It, it did a lot of uh, throwing things at the wall to see what sticks during PlayStation 3, which I guess is another reason why I have some sort of weird odd affinity for that particular life cycle. But let's, um, let's go over to the PlayStation 3 now at this point and uh, go to PSN and check out some games. Okay, we are on the PlayStation Store and we are about to do some shopping, actually, which is a foreign concept when it comes to PSP. Uh, but we will do that, and uh, I'm sure a lot of publishers and independent developers will get some very weird residual checks coming up, but let's check out some stuff, because I actually don't have that much digital content. You know, a lot of my stuff is physical. I got a lot of UMDs. But let's uh, let's actually look at the minis. So I don't have a lot of these. These are cheap. This was a program that Sony ran for a short while, mid life cycle for PSP, because they were starting to compete against, you know, smartphones that had these uh, small scale apps that were cheap or sometimes free. And this was Sony actually 
kind of waging a war against that, which we all know that didn't work out too well. But let's grab some of these because some because some of these games that actually are really good or they're direct ports from from smartphone. I just don't know which ones actually are worth picking up here. Uh, and these also are playable on PlayStation 3 for those that are unaware. So now, see, I do know. And we passed it. Jetpack Joyride is a good game. Why do I feel like buying this? <laughs> I I shouldn't. Oh, Parasite Eve. Yeah, there's Persona 2. Ten dollars. I, I just price checked it like not that long ago. I think it was like a hundred bucks. Pinball Fantasies. PS3, PSP, PS Vita. not even that big into pinball games but i do occasionally like playing them every so often <laughs> the impossible game wow circa you uh youtube what 2007 2009 i don't know that's og youtube right there tomba 2 well original tomba's also pricey i don't know what two is at two is always less expensive but one's like an ungodly amount that would actually be a good game to buy right now too uh, should i do it yeah let's go ahead oh ho, ho, ho. i will get the digital version 7.99 it's a little steep for an extremely old psp game that nobody's nobody's probably buying but and the, you have, the thing you have to remember too is that um, Vita is really the best way to play PSP games, let's be honest, um, especially if you're going all digital. So it's like PSP goes like really irrelevant in that case, unless you just really want to play on that platform in particular. But Vita is a great way to play PSP games because you can map controls to that second analog stick. Um, so, so yeah, to be honest, there's really no reason to be playing PSP Go, but we'll still buy some stuff. All right, I'm uh, I'm okay with this. We got a good mix here. We got some minis, some excellent PS1 classics, and uh, I guess that's technically our one native traditional <laughs> PSP game. But and I, I got more that I could download, but we'll we'll check out here. So the experience of playing PSP Go again after not having done so for quite a while now at this point was really fun actually. You just saw me mention how realistically the PSP Go is incredibly irrelevant due to how the Vita supports PSP games. So you can map that second stick, you can map the back touchpad. If you're going to stick with just digital PSP games, then that's for sure the way to go. But there are some upsides when you still use one of these, namely that small screen. So it's actually smaller than the standard form factor models of the 1000, 2000, 3000, uh, the street model that's lesser known. But a lot of the software back then for these older portables tend to age poorly from a visual point of view, right? So with a lower resolution, they tend to look much better on smaller screens. So that's the case with the PSP Go, where a lot of the games, they just look sharper. Notably PS1 games, these are a real joy to run through on PSP Go. And while it can't match the Vita's second stick, you can still remap controls there to better fit those older games. Now, the form factor alone is where PSP Go lives or dies for many. I know a big complaint here is the buttons being so close together means it can feel very uncomfortable versus other PSPs. Perspective is everything though. Nowadays, where I'm spending a lot of time on my Switch, where I play exclusively in handheld mode, going to this makes the Switch feel like Texas. But occasionally, I like playing on my Game Boy Micro, and that's where PSP Go will feel larger. So considering I can play on that comfortably, I'm guessing I'd be fine with any and all screen sizes at this point. I will say though, using a PSP Go or any model for that matter today in the same way that Sony actually intended can be a huge pain. I'm definitely in a less vocal group here, not immediately going with the custom firmware route, but hey, that's still a really fun way to take this. And if anything, that's what'll make a PSP relevant and it's been that way for the longest time anyway. But that is pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan. And that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.